There was a beginning. You may be asking yourself, why is this even important? Well, as you all know, something can't come from nothing, dipshit. And nothing is a lack of anything. Atoms, energy, space-time, all of that shit. I heard pause. Now listen, I know a lot of scientists say that the Big Bang is the reason for everything to exist now, but they're all full of horse shit. I mean, if you read the very beginning of the Bible, you would easily see how God says that he spoke the universe into existence. He didn't light his own fart and cause it to come into existence. He said, boom, and then there it was. So the logic entails that if there was a beginning, then there has to be some kind of beginner or creator in order for it to even come into existence. Because as I said before, something cannot come from nothing, okay? All right, so evidence number one is the cosmological argument. This is the universe couldn't come from nothing, so therefore there had to be a creator argument. And this misses a lot of key points. Uh, in And this particular argument ignores a lot of different things in order to come to its conclusion. Like, for instance, the scientific definition of nothing is nowhere near what they consider to be nothing. In the blog article, and what Brosephus said was that the, there are no atoms, there's no matter, there's simply nothing there. But what we find in reality is that even a space devoid of all matter and everything like that still has an energy signature. So this absolute nothing that seems to be being talked about here doesn't actually exist in reality, and therefore is not what scientists mean whenever they talk about a universe from nothing. And it seems like this blog article ad hoc asserts that a god or creator is needed to speak the universe into existence because that's what their Bible says. When in fact they don't consider the idea that a natural explanation could be given for the beginning of the universe. Kind of like the natural explanation that we have now for the inflation of the universe. Being that a quantum scalar field fluctuated and almost immediately inflated the universe, filling it with inflaton particles, and those particles transformed into what would become matter today. Of course, atoms weren't even able to form in this infl newly inflated universe for about 300,000 years. It wasn't until then that light could even travel through the universe. And so basically what they're doing with this first argument is they're ad hoc asserting that somebody needed to be there in order to make that quantum scalar field fluctuate and fill and inflate almost instantaneously. 